Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, episode 108, motherfuckers. 108. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you feel what I'm spraying? Got a beverage? Mmm. Ah, nothing like a cold shkablooshki on a hot global warming day, am I right? I mean, the globe is warming. (sniffs) Ah, smell that dairy air. I always think about that when, whenever I rewatch the original It movie. (laughs) Because the town they live in is called Dairy. Like D-E-R-R-Y, I think that's how they spell it. And so, you know, the movie starts off as them as children, and they encounter the same clown, and then anyway, they grow up, and then they come back to Derry to uh, hash out their differences with the clown in their hometown. And when they get there, one of the guys says, Ah, smell that dairy air. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that shit what cracks me up puts me brings me right back to my childhood cuz that was when that was when I first encountered that scene I was a child I was a child cuz that movie came out when I was a child let's see what year that came out what year did the original it come out what year did the original it come out 1996 i think it said oh no what 1986 oh no the, i'm looking for the movie though not the or maybe that is 1990 was when the movie came out 1990. Oh. B- bonanzas. Bonanzas. Here's the card for today's podcast. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what is on the card. I'm just doing a little scrolly doly oly roly poly oly here. Okay. Yeah. Yes! But you'll find out what's on the card because I'll I'll talk about it. Did I say that already? Can't remember. I'm a little bit baked. I'm a little bit high on the... Or... High, yeah, I guess. I'm high. High as a fucking kite. Got some, uh, got some new sounds. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's show me my moves. (laughs) <laughs> let's show me my moves. You know who that is. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's show me my moves. Show him his moves, please. Mm. Beverocha. Uh-huh. So we've got some stuff to, to talk about today. We've got a... Uh, a few topics that I've touched on, and now we're going to update on those specifics. <laughs> on those specific topics. Uh, we've also got some new stuff. We've got... I've got some... Well, I've got one specific YouTube channel I want to talk about. Actually, there's a few in here, but... We'll get right into that in no time. Don't know if I want to... Make drinking alcohol a regular thing on this because it might cloud my judgment on how to do this properly. Whereas when I smoke the marijuana, I'm really focused. But now I'm finding when I'm drinking this, it's it's giving me a lack of focus. It can it can bring out the confidants, but it's uh it uh there's a price that pay to pay when it comes to confidence and that is focus 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. I can't wait. I just can't wait for stuff to go right. I've been thinking about it. That's all I think about. Is stuff going right? I don't know. I don't care. Stuff goes right. I don't. Won't you be my... Smell that derriere, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ooh. I've been watching a lot of Eric Griffin lately. He's the new podcast that I'm into. Riffin' with Griffin! <laughs> he, he's great. Every once in a while, you know, because all I do is watch podcasts. If you don't know, now you know, Nigel. <laughs> but anyway, through those podcasts, you discover new people. And I knew about Eric Griffin for a long time. I think I actually discovered him on, I don't want to say it was Workaholics. I think it was something else. But uh, Workaholics really, you know, portrayed who he was and what he's capable of. And that's when I really started paying attention to him. But, you know, not like, not as much as I am now. Because back then he didn't have a podcast. But now, you know, he's he's a he's a recent uh, member into the podcast community. He still has, I think he still has less episodes than I do. Let's see. Riffin with Griffin. Now I'm I'm doing the viewfinder thing, so I'm just seeing, comparing to see which screen is slower than the other one, and I think they're exactly the same. Sometimes. The one I'm using to stream is a bit more leggy. Why do I always close the ad? Why don't I just keep it open? Eric Griffin. I want to see. I just want to see how many podcasts Eric Griffin has done. He's almost at thirty thousand subscribers. Episode four, yeah, he's only so he's only at episode forty-four. So he's not even halfway to a hundred yet. He's close though. But his shit's good, man. He's a funny guy, and he's uh, he knows how to talk. That guy knows how to talk, and he's pretty he's decently smart too. He knows some shit about shit. He's not just, uh, you know, putting his voice out on a podcast for the sake of putting his voice out on the podcast. He. Uh, He's good at spitting words. Era, era. Mm. Uh, barley soup. Is that what beer is? Barley soup? Some might say. But I wanted to touch on, on the fact that pretty well every comic is doing a podcast now pretty well not all of them but damn near all of them have their own podcast and i fucking love it i love how the internet can really uh change the game up and i'm wondering how long it's gonna last like the internet is still in somewhat of a wild wild west type era where you kind of have free range for the most part. But we see it starting to change. Um, like the, the fact that YouTube claims pretty well every video, even if you have the slightest inkling of someone else's content. And, you know, like back in the good old days in 2006 to around 10, whatever, 12-ish, you could get away with a lot on YouTube. Now, that was the true Wild West days. But now, you know, it's kind of, we're, rest we're restricting a bit. But, I mean, just the in internet in general, you don't really have much restrictions. Not compared to television, at least. 
And why was I talking about this? Oh yeah, podcasts. So now with th- with the implementation of podcasts, uh, we're free in so many ways to promote whatever it is you have. Not only that, but people gain a real personal connection with their favorite comic or whoever's on the podcast. And it's a good way to find not only find out about a person, but find out what they do and why they do it. And, and so, you know, back in the day, you would just jump into a comedy special, not knowing anything about the person, not knowing anything about what they do or why they do it. Or even if you pick up a book, you know, you read the back and that's about all you got. But now, like authors, and movie makers and comics, they can come onto a podcast and they can talk about why they did what they did and why they made this movie or wrote this book or how they got to a point where they... And then when you hear about all this stuff, it just makes you want to read the book that much more or watch that movie that much more. You know what I mean? Even if you've never even heard of the book and you just check out the podcast, you'll more than likely be attracted to the idea of of checking out the rest of this person's stuff because you you can really connect with them through podcasts. And that's, you know, that's really why I love these things. I see potential in the podcast world. And you know what? I jumped in at a good time. I could have jumped in at a way better time. But you know what? I jumped in at a good time and I stuck to it. And I'm ahead of the game in terms of all these other people that are starting podcasts. I'm not ahead of the game in, you know, the amount of subscribers and views. Uh, You know, they still dominate me because I don't have, I literally have none. But, you know, for the content itself, I have more. Uh, And so, you know, it just goes to show that more doesn't mean the best, but... you know, you got to work, espe- when uh, when you're doing what I'm doing, when I'm starting from zero, see there, these comics start from, they don't start from zero, okay? They've been in the game for a while, and they have an audience built up already, and then when they start a podcast, they go on a more popular podcast to promote their own podcast, and so, you know, you got, that's a, that's a major factor in getting views like they do, but with me, I'm trying it, I'm doing it all myself, I'm starting from scrizzach. I'm working my way up to Kizash. <laughs> if you know what I'm Sizashin. Oh. Mm. So speaking of beverages, I had two beautiful beer glasses. They were not mug style like this. They were just straight tall boy glasses. Okay? One was a Alexander Keith's edition, and the other one was a Miller Lite. And I fucking broke them both at the same time, just a few minutes ago. And that's why I have to use this stupid bowling one now. I pulled, I was, what I was doing is I was like, I grabbed, the Miller Lite one was up front, and the the Keith's one was in behind. So I grabbed the Miller Lite one up front. And then I'll, I pulled it out a bit, and I was like, I don't want this one. There's a Keith's one behind it. So I put it back down. I grab the Keith's by, like, the, the rim, and I go to pull it out, and it just fucking snaps. Like, a piece of, a chunk of glass comes out, and I'm just holding the piece of glass. The rest of the, of the, the cup, the glass, drops back down, so hits the Miller Lite glass, and that one breaks as well. So my two favorite fucking beer glasses broke at the same time. And I don't drink beer that often, but I just felt like having one. And then I go to grab my favorite glasses, and they fucking both smash at the same time. It was disappointing. So then I was like, shit, what am I going to drink out of now? And luckily this was there. And this is heavy. This is like higher quality glass. It's thicker. And it's got a handle. But it's got fucking a bowler on it. Bowling. Like how fucking... Who wants that, you know? Can you see that? I don't even know if you can see that. It's a great mug. 
but it's bowling. I mean, come on. I'll drink it, though. Mmm. Ugh, gross. So I want to open with someone, someone, some fantastic person. Um, a few episodes ago, I talked about Mr. Corey Williams from S&P Films. I showed you a clip of one of his most recent videos that he posted, basically saying that he is reached a point now after 14 years of YouTube where he has to quit YouTube because there's he's getting no financial gain at all it's drop it's dropped at such a rapid rate all three or four of his channels you know the algorithm turned against him as it does many other YouTubers and because of that he you know, lost such a major following. And he's got a family now, so he's got to, you know, he's got to make decisions. And so his decision was to move on, you know. He was the, he's an, he's the definition of an OG YouTuber. Like, THE OG. If there was, like, a top five list of OG YouTubers who, who, <coughs> you know, founded this site <laughs> into what it is, not that they're a, a founder of the site, but you know, they uh, they they put the foundation down for what it is today, and this guy is definitely in the top five. If you don't know who he is, go check the other video and go figure out who he is. You know, you got Google. You can use Google, okay? But I'm telling you, I know because I've been there. There was only a handful of YouTubers back in the day that were big, and he was one of them. And, you know, if you were a part of the YouTube community back then, you would be familiar with this guy. Because, I, like I said, there was only a handful. Like, there isn't fucking hundreds of millions like there are now. There's so many big YouTubers nowadays that you could find someone that has, like, 30 million subscribers. And you would have never heard of them or have any idea they ever existed. But back then, it was, you know... If you had 100,000 subscribers, you were number one, and no one could top you. And there was maybe, like, one other person that maybe had, like, 80,000 subscribers. Ah, uh, yes, baby. So, he posted that video. YouTube got a hold of him. Because of uh, his uh, his audience members, like myself, all you know, we are reaching out trying to trying to keep this guy alive here. Because it's hard to see people with such a big influence at at one point die. And so I'll just show you the video. Hey guys, I just want to give you a quick update on my YouTube situation. As most of you know, I said I was going to leave YouTube in October uh, around my anniversary on YouTube um, because it's just kind of a financial risk and I can't seem to get past what the problems are. Well, because of you, because of that announcement video that you guys shared, YouTube staffers have contacted me and now I am working with the YouTube technical staff to understand what this problem is. Basically what's happened is there is a large group of people, users in different countries that that are abusing the platform in a terrible way. And so YouTube's algorithm tried to fix this problem, but I called this term the flowers that got killed by the bug spray. And so now I'm helping YouTube to understand how can we save the flowers and focus on those bugs. So hopefully we get this figured out. If we can get this figured out, then likely I will stay on the site and everything will be good, but we'll see what happens. So guys, cross your fingers and wish me luck. Let's fix this problem. Hey guys, I just want to give you a quick update. Woo! So there you have it, fucks. He may just continue to stay on the platform. You know, now that he's got YouTube on his side, why can't I expand this? Where's this button? 
Uh, uh, okay, maximize, please. Sir Maximum. Oh, oh. So there you have it. He might be staying on the friggin' platform. <coughs> Isn't that great? It's gravy. It's gravy news. Oh, I got a stain on my, my cloth. I didn't, it's probably just water, though, hopefully. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's show me my moves. Let's show me my moves. That's a great line. Let's show me my moves. I hope it, uh, Ethan shows Frankie McDonald one day. That would be fucking fantastic. Well, speaking of Ethan, he bought his damn scooter. He posted on on Insta Slam, or no, Twitter. He put up a poll: which which uh, scooter should I get? And it was between three different ones. Let's go to his page here. Oh yeah, I've got the Twitter button. I keep forgetting about the Twitter button. Want to see something cool? Watch this. Watch this. Twitter. I hit the Twitter button. Twitter opens. Slowly, but it opens. Okay. This is seriously fucked. Hold on. Joe Rogin posted something. Hold on. Saying this is seriously fucked. Sound on. The earth isn't dying. It's being killed. Let's see. Hope I don't get claimed. Haven't uploaded last the last episode yet, so... Don't know if that one got claimed, so can't say. So what do we got here? Let's see what this guy has to say. I'm not going to be able to stay here long because this fire is spreading, but everything behind me right now is the forest that I've been working to protect for the last 13 years. It's burning like this every day. There are literally millions of animals in this forest that cannot escape right now. And if you think our planet can survive this every day in the Amazon, you have another thing coming. We have all the resources to protect this, to stop what's happening behind me right now, and people let it happen every day. Welcome to the fucking Anthropocene. I'm not gonna be that was very loud, but <laughs> you know we got an issue with our tissues here, friends. Um, the reason I say that is because I'm surrounded by so many conservative people, just based on the location of where I live, and they all are under the impression that global warming is not an issue. Now, or I guess reinstated as climate change. Um, and you know, whether you argue it's it's real or not, the fact is that, you know, Warmth is happening every every day. It's getting hotter every year, every summer. And so, you know, why don't we just, f like, you know, why do we care whether or not we are the issue? More than likely we are, but you can say we're not the issue, and if, you know, but that doesn't matter. If you look at the faculties, the facts, well maybe it was on another page. If you look at the facts, 
the earth is warming rapidly and we you know we're gonna get to a point where we can't even go outside and we're seeing all these forests burning down in these cities and whatnot and we're just not doing anything and we don't want to it seems like well at least half of us don't but anyway it's an I don't want to talk about climate change I don't know what the fuck I'm saying Anyways, look, here it is. So. Okay. Ethan posted. Well, maybe not Ethan, but some whoever is in charge of the H3 podcast Twitter page posted. Fuba Army, help us out. Which scooter do you think we should buy? Picks in the thread below. So, the Gatsby one. About 49%. Side-by-side side, Swivel came second with 31, and then the standard, the regular, was 20%. That was the one they were initially going to go for. But this is the one they chose. The Gatesby. Oh, wait, is this it? No, that's not it. This is the one. That's the one they got. I think they got it in red as well. Yeah, and there's the regular. But here's the Gatsby. Now, you know what this one's for. This is like the extra fatty edition. I mean, look at those off-road tires. Fat suspension. That's for the fatty fat fats. They just put two... S made it look like two seats to make the, the fat person feel less insecure. But let's look at that. That is definitely a fat guy's seat. Why would you want two people on one scooter, you know? That's for fatty. But the people spoke and they ordered this one. And probably by next episode, or maybe the next couple episodes, we'll see him cruising around on a fucking scooter. And I'm all for him scooting around, okay? I think it's funny. It's great, but um, like I said, that fucking scooter Martha or whatever her name is, she's got to go. That girl's insane. Uh, she's insane. <laughs> We're creeping and lurking. We creeping and lurking. Alcohol is so fucking. Not even. Well, it's, yeah, it is fun, I guess. I mean, I have plenty of memories of having fun drinking booze and getting drunk. <laughs> but it's so different than being high, you know? Being high, you can focus, we have extra focus on things. And you think about things really deeply. And you figure shit out. You analyze the problems you have in your head and you figure it out. But with beer or any alcohol, you just drink and you get super confident. And then the rest of all your other abilities go in the goddamn trash. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how Post Malone does it. I mean, maybe people just handle it differently. Fucking post is always drunk. And you can even tell on like his interviews on like Jimmy Kimmel and whatnot, he's drinking fucking Bud Light. And you can tell he's drunk and he's slurring what he's saying. He'd be a, m he'd be a bit more smoother of a guy if he wasn't fucking drunk all the time. But, you know, to each his own, I guess. Because I think I heard him say he's not a, he's not a weed guy. He's a, but he's definitely a, a Bud Light guy. It's all he drinks. He's sponsored by Bud Light, which is good for him, you know. The guy obviously knows what he's doing, but you can you can like if, like if you don't believe me, go watch one of his more recent interviews. 
I think it was with Jimmy Fallon. It might have been Jimmy Kimmel, but it was one of the Jimmys. And he was asking him questions, and he wasn't answering them to... Like, you could tell he was off kilter. And you could tell he's drinking. Like, they don't... He doesn't actually have hold a Bud Light can, because they can't show that on the show. He's got the Jimmy, F- Jimmy Fallon mug, and in that is the beer. And I think they reference it at one point. But you can just tell. Like, he's slurring... He's not answering the questions properly. And when you look in the comments, no one recognizes it. And you could conspirize and say, well, they're, they are uh, manipulating the comments so that only the good ones show up. Well, maybe, but I highly fucking doubt it. But all I know is for me, when I smoke weed, I get ultra focus. And sometimes a little paranoia, depending on what's going on in my life. But, you know, that's the whole thing about weed. Whatever feeling, whatever emotion you're feeling at the time when you go to smoke that shit or eat it or vape it, however you do it, it's going to accelerate that. So you got to be prepared, you know, you got to, you got to train yourself how to smoke the shit properly. But with this, like, I don't even like this. I don't even want it anymore. The only time I really finish off a bunch of beer is when I'm with other people and they're all drinking as well. Even then, I don't even enjoy it, because afterwards, you just feel like garb, if you drink too much, especially. And shit makes you depressed. I hate it. Why am I even bothering drinking? But, you know, but, yeah, I'm just not like I'm getting drunk right now. I'm just having, like, that was literally my, this is my second one right now. Like, I can super control myself with alcohol. I don't care. I don't like it. I'll occasionally have some, but it's not like... It's not something I turn to. For my problems. Because I've got the problems. You know that, right? We all got the problems. And it is hot in here. It's so hot. Uh, let's, Let's move on to the next topic, shall we? Uh, James Charles, you familiar? Oh, what happened? Oh, that's why. Did my session expire on this thing? Bullshit. I don't give a fuck. I don't need your stanky ass. I'll just use the regular mouse. You dumb piece of shit. You piece of shit. Do you know what's happening with my fucking... What is it called? Team viewer session expired. Uh, <laughs> like, I give a fuck. I've got wireless mice and keyboards. It's hot in here. So anyway, James Charles, the Charles and Nader. This fella, he's... uh. You know, he's a character. The guy is more a girl than a guy. I don't know what the fuck he identifies as, and I don't really care. But he's making the news. Because just like every celebrity out there, their fucking phones are getting hacked, and their nudes are getting spread around. Like Whitney Cummings recently. You know, hers wasn't even that bad. It was, she was just in the bath and there was a slight nipple shown. And, you know, dudes were like, pay me or I'm going to post this. And she was like, fuck you. I'll just post it anyway. And you know what? That's the beauty of Twitter. Is that they still allow porn and all kinds of not safe for work shit on their site. So if there's ever a chance where a celebrity needs to just... 
fight off these fuckers who threaten them with posting their nudes for money, all the celebrity has to do is just say, you know what, I'll just post them myself. I'll just get them out there so there's n- they can't hold it against me. And that's been happening a lot lately. And James Charles, the fame famous fucker for makeup, who's been uh, in the news, you know, about a month or so ago about some other stuff that he's been doing with that other channel about the vitamins and how uh I don't I don't remember what it was. It was <laughs> it's one of those things where like it's big at the time and then you forget about it. But you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, he's back in the news. He he only had one nude uh for the people to threaten him with, but you know, just like Whitney Cummings and all the rest, he just went ahead and posted the nudes himself. And I'm not going to show you the nudes. The n- well, it's just one nude. And it's not a, it's not even really a nude, it's just his butt. But um it looks like he has a fucking fake ass. Like it's like perfectly round. <laughs> as weird as that is to say, it's like he's he's probably got a fake ass. Like it looks totally fake. But anyway, like it's like a Kim Kardashian ass. That's how fake it looks. But people are posting, you know, all kinds of like SpongeBob memes saying stuff like can't believe James Charles got a bigger ass than me. My gam me gambling all my money to how much James Charles spent on his butt injections. Yeah, like it's completely obvious his ass is not fake. So if you haven't seen his ass, um, so this is basically, this is the photo here, but this person blocked it and this is, this is what I'm using. It's so fucking loud. See? Anyway, his ass is behind this square. I don't I can't show it. But it's fucking huge. I have it opened up here, but I can't show it. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> everybody's posting videos like this. Like if he was a girl, it would look great. I mean, it looks great on him anyway, but you know, I'm just not into that thing. Go check out Charles James Charles's butt. Go check it. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Man, I'm never fucking drinking alcohol on this show again. It's making me wonky. It's putting me off my kilter. I, you know, weed is the way to go. Don't fucking... Unless you know how to do it. I don't recommend drinking beer. Or anything. It's just not for me. Anyway, another person. Emma Stone. You know Emma Stone? You all know her. Uh, The bitch is playing fucking Cruella DeVille. In the new goddamn 101 Dalmatians live action remake. And you know what? First glance, I would have never guessed that this was uh, Emma Stone. But, you know, you look at it, and you're like, oh, yeah, that is Emma Stone. And you know what? She looks really good. That's a really good Cruella de Vil impression, impersonation. Like I bet she's gonna I bet she's gonna kill it. Emma fucking stone. I remember having these Disney cartoons as a child. Like the first one was called One Hundred Dalmatians, wasn't it? And then the second one was one hundred and one, or was the first one one hundred and one and the second one was one hundred and two or something? I don't remember. I don't even remember what the movie was about. 
you know? Like, I, I'm not, like I've said last episode, I'm not the kind of person who watches a lot of movies, but I did, when I was a child, watch a lot of the animated movies. But I had no idea what was going on, and I don't remember really at all the plots of any of them, especially 101 Dalmatians. And I wonder if they're going to call the movie 101 Dalmatians, or if they're going to call it... What does it say? Emma Stone vs. Cruella will take place in London. Is the movie called Cruella? Or is it called 101 Dalmatians? Why does Emma Stone look like Colleen? So the movie is called Cruella. Why is the movie called Cruella? I think they should call that movie f like the original, right? They always do this whenever they remake these movies. They call them something different. Which I guess I'm okay with, but... I just think if you're gonna remake a movie, shouldn't you call it what what it is? I don't know. I know. Uh, you know what? Now that now I might disagree with what I just said, because I bet if I was making the movie, I'd say I will. I don't want to call it 101 Dalmatians. This is my creation. I want to call it something else, even though it's completely based off the. I don't know what to say. The alcohol is clouding my judgment. Don't drink the poison while you do the poop cast. Do smoke the loveliness when you do the podcast, though. It's my new rule. No more drinking on the podcast. It's garbage. Smoke. Smoke. Don't drink. Smoke, kids. Don't drink. Ugh. No. <laughs> no, children. Don't do either. Wait until you're at least 18 before you try the shit. I say, you know, I can't stop you from trying, obviously. And you're probably going to try alcohol in your, in your teenage years. And that's fine. I did. And you'll like it. And you'll love the fact that it gives you confidence. But once you get older and you understand what marriage awareness can do to help improve your life, you're going to love that shit even better. You're going to hate alcohol. Well, you might not. At least this is how it went for me. Um, that's what I was going to say about that. Uh, oh, yeah. So I never tried marijuana in school I didn't try marijuana until I was 18 and I was already out of school so I have to wonder what would what would my opinion of marijuana be if I started it in high school I feel like I would just feel paranoid all the time because you know that's your high school years you're paranoid about shit anyway and then the marijuana worse, you know, but maybe not. Maybe it would have made things better. Maybe it would have made you better. Um, I want to talk about Carlos Lastra. Whoops, Carlos Lastra on Braille skateboarding. That motherfucker. He. He decided he's had enough of Braille. No, he's just, he's done with Braille. I've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. He's, well, I've mentioned Braille before, but I haven't mentioned this before. He's done with Braille. Oh, man, I'm starting to sweat. I'm starting to get uncomfortable. I might have to end this podcast. Um. Okay, before I go, I just want just to mention this channel. It's called Dope or Nope. See this? Dope or nope? 
created by this guy, Matthias. The guy's pretty cool. There's two other guys on the show. He's got this whole network called High Five Studios. He's doing great. I mean, I don't have to promote him. He's, he's if anything, he should be promoting me, you know? <laughs> but it's, you know, every once in a while when I find a new channel that I like, I'm just going to mention it on this podcast. Just because I feel like it. Dope or nope. It's uh basically revolves around, you know, this guy will buy products online and then they'll test them and then they'll decide whether they're dope or nope. They'll give you recommendations. But it's uh it's a bit more intricate and it's very well done. It's funny. And, you know, they've got all kinds of other avenues they've gone down. They got a gaming channel, they've got other things. It's you know, they're like they're like a version of the mythical s- mythical studio. Like, th- you know, this is just one... Dope Nope is just one part of the whole High Five studio where mythical entertainment has, you know, they've got Good Mythical Morning, they've got Rhett and Linked, and they've got Smosh now. And then the... Uh, let's talk about that. Um, the mythical society, they got all these other avenues, and that's what these guys are doing, there's not a lot of, well, there is a lot of, <laughs> there is now a lot of YouTube, you know, enterprises, but this is just one of the good ones that I want to promote, I don't know, check them out, check the motherfuckers out, it's way too hot in here, so I'm gonna have to end this, this right here, unfortunately we can't do Reddit anymore, which is a bummer, but what I might do, what I've what I've been thinking of doing is make a collection of videos that I know can't be claimed, and then uh, you know what that is what I'm gonna do. So from now on, I'm going to prepare a bit more, even though I prepare a lot as it is. I'm gonna prepare a bit more now. write down a note let myself know uh sorry for not talking just got to write this down that won't get claimed cuz you can tell what videos won't get claimed and what will usually if they're you know amateur homemade stuff it's not going to get claimed but if it's by a uh, you know, a studio or whatever, you have a chance of getting claimed. But anyway, so that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, episode 108. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and don't forget to be a jolly old soul. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers, everyone. Goodbye. Do I got to do everything, Janice? So what did I do when I went over there? Um, I reached over and I grabbed this. You like it? Well, you shouldn't because it's uh, the back. French vanilla cream pie. French. French vanilla cream pie. Shawarma. Be my shawarma.